Hey you and welcome. My name is Mike and in this whole video, we're going to talk about a guy named Edwin Lara and a woman named Kaylee Sawyer. Ring any bells? Well, Edwin Lara, he was up to no good. Let me tell you. He was responsible for a missing woman, Kaylee Sawyer, went on the run after he told his wife about it, who was a police officer by the way. Then what he thought was a real good idea was to take another woman hostage, and then he shot a guy. Yeah, it's crazy. Probably even crazier than it sounds. His little rampage. So I guess, you guys, let's stop faffing about and get into it. This story begins in Bend, Oregon. Bend is a beautiful city nestled right smack dab in the middle of old Oregon. And that's where Kaylee Sawyer lived. Kaylee grew up in Bend. Her parents divorced when she was young. She did have step-siblings, but she was the oldest. She was described as someone with a big, happy personality. Always smiling, would talk to anyone. She worked as a dental assistant in the city of Bend. And in 2016, she was 23 years old, living with her boyfriend of two years, Cameron. On the night of July 23rd, 2016, Saturday night, Kaylee was out with her friends celebrating a bachelorette party. They were bar hopping in downtown Bend. They were all having a good time, drinking and such, sounds like fun. At one point, Kaylee's friends noticed she was flirting and dancing with a guy, who was most definitely not her boyfriend Cameron. But, you know, they were all a little bit drunk. It wasn't anything too bad, so it was fine. So then, at around midnight, as the party is dying down, Kaylee rings up Cameron. Ring, ring. Come get me. On that ride home, Kaylee and Cameron got into an argument, presumably stemming from, uh, well, drinking and uh, dancing with the other guy and so forth. When they arrived home, the argument continued in the parking lot of their apartment, near Central Oregon Community College, with Cameron frustrated, eventually going upstairs. He then came back down 10 minutes later, and Kaylee was gone. During previous fights, you know, uh, Kaylee, she would usually go for a walk after, just to cool off, you know, cooler heads prevail, something like that. Anyway, um, so she'd usually go for a walk, but be back pretty soon. But this time she left for a walk and was gone gone and staying gone. Cameron then began texting her, tick tick tick, hey, uh, maybe do you want to come home or something? It's getting pretty late, please come home. The argument continued over text, with Cameron just saying, it's very late, please come home. And Kaylee would just, was just like, my phone's dying, goodbye. And so eventually she stopped responding. The next day, her phone keeps going to voicemail. Cameron alerts her family, and as the day goes on, the weariness level goes up a notch. She had left her car at a friend's house before they all went out on Saturday night, and she hadn't returned to it. Cameron and Kaylee's mother then call 911 and report her missing. Dispatch, how can I help you? Hello? Hi. Um, I'm not sure if this is quite the right number to call. Last night I got home from the bars with my girlfriend. She got upset at me and ran off. Mm -hmm. And I chased her and wasn't able to find her, and I still haven't heard from her. Her phone's off. I called all our family, and they haven't heard from her, so I'm wondering what you recommend I do. We can put in a call, and we can uh, have officers and deputies uh, look for her. Okay. Yeah, she was mad at me, so I walked inside and told her to come meet me, and then when she's like, calm down. And then I went back out in 10 minutes, and she was gone. And I called her a few times, and she said she was walking down the street. And then I guess she said her phone is about to die. I haven't heard from her since. And so Monday morning arrives, and Cameron and her friends and family start to become extremely concerned. They thought that, you know, um, maybe she had just gone to a friend's house and her phone was dead, so she would show up. But then, as I said, Monday comes around, she doesn't show up for her dental assistant job in Bend something is wrong. The police, they look into the guy she was dancing with, nothing there, they look into Cameron. As you know, uh, in a lot of these cases when somebody goes missing or whatever, 
does tend to be the partner, usually, but Cameron, no, he's clean as a whistle. Kaylee's family loved him, they knew he would never ever hurt Kaylee. Good evening, I'm Alex Biston. An unusual missing person case has hundreds of Central Oregonians concerned and on the lookout. Bend police are working to find Kaylee Sawyer. And tonight, Jennifer Wade spoke with Sawyer's parents. Jen, how long has their daughter been missing? Alex Sawyer was last seen early Sunday morning near her West Bend apartment parking lot, walking toward nearby Central Oregon Community College. Her mother says her daughter is very close to her family and it's very unusual for them not to hear from her for two days. They say they are worried sick and just want to get their Kaylee back. She has four, four younger brothers who desperately want their big sister home. Missing 23-year-old Kaylee Sawyer has much of Central Oregon on the lookout. Thousands of concerned residents spent the day putting up flyers and sharing their concern on Facebook. And we just contacted everybody and said, please get her face out there. The incoming COCC student and Ben Native was last seen at 1 a.m. Sunday near the parking lot of her West Side apartment near COCC. And so the search continued. So what did happen to Kaylee that night? As Kaylee was walking down the road that night after she left her and Cameron's apartment, a car pulled up beside her. A Central Oregon Community College security car. She got in the car, presumably thinking this guy may have driven her home, but we don't really know why she got in the car. But you know, after all, he's a security officer, his job is to help people, technically, and Bend, it's a nice town. But that's not what happened. Instead, he asked for sex, and when Kaylee tried to escape, call for help, he strangled her until she was unconscious. He then drove to an isolated parking lot, and when Kaylee woke up, he choked her again. Then he dragged her unconscious body out of the car, and smashed a rock into her head. He then raped her, and when he realized she was still alive, he smashed another, even bigger rock into her head. He then left her body there and drove back to campus. He then returned to the scene of the crime in his own car, put her in the trunk, and dumped her body in nearby Redmond. And then, finished up shift for the night, he returned home and got into bed with his wife. That's what happened to Kaylee, but at this point, no one had any clue. That man was 31-year-old college security guard Edwin Laura. And his wife, Isabel Ponce Laura, was a rookie police officer in Bend. Two days after the brutal murder, Isabel was up in the morning watching TV, when all of a sudden Edwin came down from their bedroom, visibly upset. Isabel was like, what's, what's wrong? What happened? And he tells Isabel that he had accidentally hit somebody with his car and driven off. He had done a hit and run. As he's talking to his wife, Isabel, about this, that he hit somebody and then fled the scene accidentally, he then decides to take her gun and their car and do a legger. Isabel, you know, she was a police officer rookie, but she had heard the news of Kaylee Sawyer being missing, you know, that same night and put two and two together. And this is when the case goes up a notch. Isabel then went to the police and turned Edwin in. But no one knew where he went. I was just waiting for him to get up so we could start the morning. So he comes out of the room and his eyes were all teary. That's what I'm like, what happened? Tell me what happened. Why are we wrong? So he sits on the sofa. I turn off the TV. And then he just says that. He's like, I, I kill a woman, that's what he said. And I'm like, what do you mean? Then he's like, I hit her with the car. And did he tell you which car? He said the, the security, the, the job, the car that they used at the job. And what, and what did you say to that? So I'm like, what do you mean? What, what, what do you mean you hit her? And, He's like, yeah, I hit her and I panic. 
No, Mike, what, is, what do you mean by you hit her panicking? What did you do? Did, did he say, I hit her in a panic? He said, I don't remember exactly the words that he said, but he said something that he hit her with the car yeah. and then he panicked. So then I asked him, like, that's what I was trying for him to explain to me. You hit her with the car. That's an accident. Yeah. Why? What do you mean you panic? What, what do you mean? And what did he say? He just kept saying, I panic. And at that point, he's already, like, he got up and he's already, like, going into the room and walking back and forth. And I'm not really quite understanding what he's telling me. And then I'm like, so what did you do with the body? What? And he's like, I hit her. It was just him moving around. I'm not sure if he, I don't think he grabbed anything other than he did grab my gun from my purse. And then he just kept saying, I, I need to go, I need to go. And then right before he left, he's like, there's her stuff in the shed. He's, how did you say, say that again? He said, he said something in regards to there's, her stuff is in the shed. And her stuff is in the shed. And the hunt for Edwin Lara, it done began. Police then searched the home of Edwin and Isabel, and in the shed they found a white bag with Kaylee's high heeled shoes, her purse, a blood stained rock, and a clump of her bloody hair. Police then had a pretty good idea of what happened to Kaylee that it wasn't no accidental hit and run, uh, that, you know, she's most likely dead, but they didn't have a body. But so, the case, it switched from a missing persons case to a homicide case. So, where did Edwin go, I wonder? The day he fled his home with his wife's gun, no less, he drove to Salem, Oregon. He was looking for somebody. He was looking for a woman. And, as Andrea Mays was leaving her customer service job at T-Mobile, she was getting into her car. And as she turned the L car on, she, she sat there in her car, flicking through social media, you know, after a hard day's work. When all of a sudden, Edwin Laura shows up right next to her with a gun in her face, and he demands she drive. They then began to drive south. At first, Andrea, well, she didn't know what to do. Edwin told her he had killed somebody and that they were going to California. He then took over driving. After several hours driving south towards California, Edwin, he got tired. So they pull into a roadside motel. He took Andrea with him. In the room, he handcuffed her to the bed frame and forced her to take sleeping pills. And just when it seems like he's gonna you know, uh, her phone alarm goes off. Literally just her alarm. But Edwin, he's like, oh, the police, they must be hot on my heels. Are you working with the police? What is that? Is that like a tracker or something? What the hell? So, so really quick thinking by Andrea, and this, this is pretty good, actually. She's like, no, 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 no. Um, the alarm on my phone, that's to remind me to take my... Um, is to remind me to take my STD medication. Yeah, I got an STD. It's gross as shit. You don't want to know. It's ugh, make you sick. It's horrible. So thankfully, that was enough to, uh, you know, Edwin didn't didn't hurt her. Thankfully, but that was that's pretty good. The next day, Edwin and Andrea are back on the road, but clunk. Andrea's car is fucked, springing, springing oil and shit all over the road. They need a new car. They then pull over at a motel in Wairika, California. In the parking lot, Edwin, he saw a guy loading his car. And he walked over with Andrea. And they meet Jack Levy, loading his photography equipment. Edwin demanded his car keys. And when Jack called for help, Edwin shot him in the stomach. Yeah. Uh, now, thankfully, Jack Levy, he, he would be fine, he would survive, even though he had got gut shot, he was okay. But, you know, the gunshot, that was enough to scare Edwin off. He was like, drat, police are gonna be hot on my ass. So he just left Jack there, 
and still grabbing and dragging Andrea with him, they run to a gas station across the road. Then at that gas station, he carjacks a car with a woman and her two teenage grandsons inside. And he brings Andrea along with him. And so the five of them continue driving south. And Edwin tells Andrea, this woman, and her two grandsons, have you ever had the urge to kill? Because he's got a hot case of it. He eventually drops the family off at the side of the road, but keeps Andrea as a human shield. Hi everybody, um, I just want to say that I apologize for everything I've done. Most likely I'm going to get caught. And um, sorry about that girl. My bad girl in Central Oregon. And I just want to let family members um, Andrea, that she's fine and she will be fine because uh, so far she's been doing uh, what I've been going to do. You know, and, and if you guys are wondering uh, if I have that dirty thing to her, no. Alright, I'm not that kind of guy. You know, I just. I used to kill that other girl, you know, and I regret it. I regret killing her. You know, she's kept screaming and had to stop her forever. So, you know, like I say, she's still fine. We're driving and she'll be home pretty soon. I'm sorry to her grandma and her family members, to her boyfriend. You know, I'm sorry. Everything that I caught. Okay, and you'll see her pretty soon. Okay, so the cops said not to shoot us because if they shoot us, then that's not my fault. Okay, but sorry, everybody. Bye. Then, driving near Redding, California, a highway police officer is on their ass after Edwin begins driving around 120 miles an hour. Edwin then calls 911, said he's going to turn himself in. 911 emergency reporting. Yes, hi, this is Edwin Lara, and I'm the guy on Interstate, Interstate 5, going at high speed. I, I know you guys have the chopper on me already. Yeah. And uh, yeah, I just want to say I am going to turn myself in. Okay, where are you at? Okay, I'm on I-5, uh, I think close to Reading, if I'm right. You know, I, I am wanted for murder in the state of Oregon. Okay. Edwin, yeah. where are you at right now? Can you stop? I am going to stop once I head ready. Are you by yourself or? No, I have someone with me. I kidnapped her in Oregon. She's innocent. Uh, her name is Andrea. Okay. Are you hurt at all, Andrea? No. No? Okay. The officer sees you. And are you able to safely stop? Yeah, I, I can stop, uh, but not right now. I'll stop in Corning. Uh, what's the difference from stopping now in Corning? I just don't want to stop right here in the middle of the road, you know, putting myself in danger and putting everybody else in danger, more in danger, I guess. You know, they won't. They're, they're aware. I'll let them know they won't. But if you can stop safely, they just don't want you to run. They don't think you're trying to run or anything. Okay. Yes, um, yes, Edward, yes. do you have any weapons with you? Yeah, that's what I was going to say. I do have a gun on me. I am not going to flash the gun, so you tell them not to shoot me. Okay. No, I don't want to die. Okay, you stick by your word, though. I'll let them know. Yeah, I'm not, yeah, I'm going to let them know. You know, uh, don't hurt Andrea. You know, she's a nice girl. I am I am wanted for the death of uh, Kaylee Sawyer. She was really drunk, and I didn't see her, and I ran her over. Okay. Uh, she was still breathing, and then she was screaming, and I just decided to silence her forever. You want me to throw my gun out of the window right now? Okay, no, right? Not right now. No, no, no. Don't do that right now. All right. I can just give it to Andrea and see if she wants to kill me. No, no, no. You don't want to do that to her and yourself. Well, basically or technically, it's illegal to talk on the phone and drive, right? You, you know, if you're calling in an emergency and you know what, this is just a total different circumstance, okay? He told the arresting officer he was wearing body armor. When asked why, he said, I came to throw down, bro. He didn't actually say, bro, but he may as well have.
but he said he came to throw down, whatever that means. Edwin was then arrested. Andrea was also arrested, uh, you know, uh, the hostage. She was arrested on suspicion of murder and kidnapping, well, the attempted murder of Jack Levy. But eventually she was cleared, um, uh, you know, because she was the victim in all of this, she was a hostage for like two days. And so Edwin is taken in. Okay. You know, wherever you want. Just tell me where you want to be set. That's fine. I'll sit right here. Okay, thank you. Hello, sir. Hi. My name is Sergeant Beckwith. I'm Mac. Oi. I shouldn't introduce myself because he has no name. Uh, we know a little bit, right? <laughs> All right, so here's the um, thing I just want to get to the nitty gritty. Uh, we have not been able to find Kaylee's body. Can you please uh, help me find her body immediately? Before we start talking about anything else. Oh. The reason why I'm asking you that is uh, I've done this a bunch of times. I want to tell you where the body is. Yeah, I do. But I want to get on first. Because I don't think you're a bad guy, right? I think that things have spun completely out of control, sir. Sir, am I right? Okay. And, and you know this I'll man, not a man Matt. wants to do a map. So before, can I say the story what happened first? Yeah, as you're drawing, please, or whatever, whatever you'd like to do. <sighs> Sir, let's do that first. I want to get you out of that stuff. I wave for now. Yeah. Hey, but who you ask if we can get him out of that stuff so we can be brought I wave from Redmond to Salem. That's 120, right? Uh, I think it's 126. 126. What happened, man? What happened? The, like the straight up what happened. So I was putting the signs up for the there was an event going on. It's a cult yeah. um, It's a cyclist event or whatever. So I was going to turn south on the do not enter area there. And I didn't see her. She was wearing all black. So I was in a hurry. So it was my fault. And I wasn't expecting anybody, you know, at that time of night. So I just turned and and I, I mean, I didn't hit her that hard. I used bumper with the, the patrol car, bumper mm -hmm. with the front rack. And she fell down. And at first I thought, you know, first thing I was, oh, I killed her, you know, but I didn't hit her that hard. So I got off the car and she was really drunk. And then she looks at me and then she started screaming. She started screaming at yeah. you. She did. So I panic and I just grab her by the throat and told her, shut up, shut up, shut up. So she passed out, I put her on the back of the patrol car, drove her up the B12 lot, and then I was panicking, I didn't know what to do. She already seen me, she saw my face. <clears throat> so I opened the door. And that's when she came back. She started screaming again. So I grabbed her to chuck home. And I was telling her, shut up, shut up, shut up, shut up. She was just struggling to scream. So I threw her down and my head over the rock on the head. After that, I dragged her body. <clears throat> behind a tree there and I head over the night rock. And that's when I think she died because I heard her breathing. Her best breath. During the interrogation, he says that oh yeah, I did hit Kaylee Sawyer, but but you know guys, it was an accident. Then, he says, he thought she was a prostitute, and he killed her when she screamed and then had sex with her body. So a couple things you need to understand, and we're finally getting to the real problem here, we really are, is you knew she was never getting out the car the moment you shut that door. Well, let me finish. You need to let me finish, right? Because I know this, okay? Because you said you were a hooker. She's like, no, 
immediately you go to give me your purse and your phone. Well, I knew she wasn't going to get out. She wasn't I mean, going to. She wasn't going to survive that encounter, was she? No, because you can't rape her and let her live, can you? And she can't make a phone call if you have it. I wasn't going to rape her. Well, you can't let her live. Edwin, we're missing something here, man. Look, yeah, I know what you guys are thinking, and it makes perfect sense. It does. Because why would you ask? Why would you ask for her purse? What was in your head that made you want her purse? Because you know, just in case she had a gun, she had she she could defend herself. She was going to use her phone to call nine one one. Call for so, but sense. listen to listen to this. According to your story, th- this is where it does not make sense. If your intent isn't already there to do some kind of harm or some kind of evil to her, some friggin' evil that's there, bro, it's there. You just gotta face it down, man. You can't cower away from it. You face that damn thing down right now. If I you know the that. only way. If you don't have intent in her head, your thought is, i got to keep that phone away from her because she's going to call from help before anything bad's even happened. You've already made a decision. Am I right or am I wrong? Tell me. So I made the decision that I have to silence her. To kill her. I, Let's be real. When you say yeah. silence her, you mean kill her. Is that correct? Okay. Because when did you make that decision? When she started screaming. Because she has seen my face. But you already grabbed her phone. You already kept her away from making a call for help or contacting someone. So you're already preserving yourself. So I'm thinking it's before when you ask for the purse. I think you already know in your head, I'm going to silence her. I'm going to kill her. The sound that you heard after the strike of the first rock, before you hit her with the second, is agonal breathing. And you know this. It's the sound of life leaving her body. It's the sound of the life God breathed into her, leaving her, and her life being no more, going away, being done. It's the sound of everyone loving her, mourning. It's the sound of her blood crying out from the friggin' earth. Right? You know this. It's Cain and Abel. No. No. You know what it is? You need to hear it, though. Okay? I respect you enough, Edwin, at this point, that I, I've asked you for detail, and now I'm going to give you my own. Okay? Those are the cold, hard facts. Does God still love you? Will he forgive you? Will he bring you back into his heart? Really? Questions you have to answer for yourself. But the truth of the matter is that her blood cries out, man, that her life is gone. It will never be replaced. The truth of the fact is this, what you mistook for a hooker was an absolute angel, was the apple of her mom and dad's eye, was the breath that they breathed, that they spent and cultivated all their life raising and growing, and she is gone forever with your semen all over her. That's the truth, man. Okay? It's brutal. It's hard to say. It's hard to sit in here, but you've got to face it before you can look your God in the eye and ask for that forgiveness and be able to receive it. I think all throughout my life, I have struggled with somehow the urge to kill. Is this addressed to, to dad? Yeah, the last one is for CNCC. Okay. Um, I think it would play pretty well on recording if we read this out loud. It might sure show some of your emotion. It might show... Want me to read it? I would love you to read it. Thank you, sir. I'd be trying to ask Katie for forgiveness. But I don't think her soul hears my crying because God doesn't allow the devil to talk to angels. However, I know Katie hears you, and if you find it within your heart, please ask her to forgive me. Please, I beg you. Please. I know that I will spend the rest of my life asking God to forgive me, but I don't think he will. Sir. This is directed to her dad. I am not sure what your name is, but I know for a fact that you loved your daughter. A man like me don't have a heart. 
Please forgive me, sir. Please forgive me, and please ask your wife to forgive me too. I fail you. I fail my community. I fail everyone, including my family. I am really sorry. Unfortunately, though, when it came to trial, uh, that entire interrogation was inadmissible. You know why? When Edwin was arrested in California, uh, when he was taken in, he asked for a lawyer, and he wasn't given one. Okay. So when, when is your court? When are you having court? So right now, I feel like all my rights are being violated. Because I don't, an attorney hasn't been appointed to me, although, you know, they, they read my rights when I got here. I keep asking for an attorney, and there is no attorney, so... Okay, mira, yo, yo, okay. Sabes tú cómo trabajan estas cosas. So, limítate a lo que me digas. Yo estoy haciendo lo que pueda hacer por ti, yeah, okay? To let you know this call is being recorded, I know you know that already. But anyway... Por eso, anyway, lo que estoy diciendo es que yo no voy a hacer mucho. I know. Okay, pero sí voy a ver qué puedo hacer en ayudarte I mean, como... Never you speak Spanish. No, es que no está hablando, I'm just talking to you, babe. That's it. Talking to you normal. So that was all kind of useless, a big blow to the prosecution. But, you know, I think they had enough to go forward. Anyway, Kaylee's body was eventually found, and it was pretty horrific. Police discovered it after Edwin alerted them to a note he left in the car he abandoned in Salem before he took Andrea Mays hostage. The note three times had the number 18700, though there was no context as to what that number meant. Police were then able to use this number to turn up an address on Highway 126. Kaylee's body was dumped just off the side of the road and wasn't covered with rocks or bushes. Topping your newscast tonight, a day of major developments in the Kaylee Sawyer murder case. A grand jury has indicted former COCC public safety officer Edwin Laura on four counts of aggravated murder. The indictment released today reveals that prosecutors believe Laura kidnapped Sawyer, tried to sexually assault her, then killed her. Authorities say Laura fled to California and shot a man and carjacked three people before leading police on a high-speed chase down Interstate 5. And we now know more disturbing details about what happened to Sawyer. Edwin Lara may now be looking at the death penalty. Edwin would plead guilty to murdering Kaylee Sawyer, so no death penalty. He got life in prison, no parole possible. God Almighty, who are you here? Oh, no, he will deny. I'll ask you, please, heal the hearts, all those broken hearts of this community. Today, Kaylee's grandfather addressed the court and his granddaughter's killer. But he will die in prison, and it will be a lifetime experience for you. He'll probably wish he'd been given the death sentence. Rot hell, scumbag. You have no idea how much irreversible damage this piece of shit has done to my extended family. With that said, I'm not much of a religious person, but I have my beliefs, and one of them is an eye for an eye. So if you will give custody to this piece of shit to my extended family, We'll take them out in the desert. We'll let the eagles, the hawks, the coyotes, and the maggots eat that piece of shit alive. And then, when the buzzards are done pecking his friggin' body, I'm gonna shit in his face and piss on his carcass. And I'm gonna fill his carcass full of lead. He also got a second uh, life in prison for kidnapping Andrea Mays. He's still awaiting charges for the shooting of Jack Levy and carjacking that family, but it's unlikely he ever will get any, you know, two life sentences, no parole. It's not really a... I suppose there's not really a whole lot more they can give him. Thankfully, he got the worst.
What a case. Bad shit. Um, he consistently said, Edwin consistently said throughout the entire ordeal that he had an urge to kill. Which uh, then led police officers to think, you know, when they were investigating him, that he could be a serial killer. They actually contacted the FBI to investigate him to see if he actually was. Thankfully, they didn't find anything or link him to any other murders or disappearances, but, well, yet, that is. But, you know, I mean, if he hadn't um, confessed to his wife about what happened to Kaylee Sawyer, if he hadn't gone on this crime spree, who knows, you know, what else he could have done while uh, kind of lurking in the shadows. And even, you know, the crime spree he did go on. He could have very easily killed Jack Levy. He could have done God knows what to Andrea Mays. There's a lot more people he could have killed if he finally, you know, didn't decide to, to turn himself in. But, um, he did some pretty sick shit. But thankfully, he's got a, you know, natural life in prison. And I think, uh, Kaylee Sawyer's grandfather said it best when he said, Rot hell, And there you have it. Thank you so, so much for watching. I really appreciate it. I will see you, as always, real soon in the next video. Take care of yourselves. Mike out.